Hello everyone, this is Terry with Futures.io, and as always, I'd like to thank you for joining us today. It's my pleasure to welcome expert traders Scott Pulsini and Bruce Pringle from Bookmap for today's webinar, Effective and Expert Order Flow Strategies. Throughout the webinar, if you have a question, please feel free to type them into the questions box, and we'll do our best to answer them throughout the event. This webinar will be recorded and posted on the Futures.io website within 24 to 48 hours. If you're watching this afterwards on YouTube, please do us a favor and give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed the webinar. And as always, please feel free to share, comment, subscribe to our channel. It really helps us a lot. For trading news, events, and information, follow us on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter using at Futures.io. And now, without further delay, I will hand it over to Scott and Bruce. And Scott, you should get the pop-up to share your screen again. Did you see it? Yep. All right, she's okay. all yours. Great. Okay. Uh, well, uh, everybody, this is Bruce from Bookmap, and uh, I just want want to uh, introduce Scott here, uh, and uh, we're uh, we're really happy to have him uh, using the product. Uh, as such a, a a a great trader here, uh, using it at a high level. Uh, and Scott's going to go through and talk about uh, his different order flow uh, strategies and uh, uh, some of his background and, and history. Uh, he's been trading for over 20 years, uh, and during the uh, years of uh, 2002 to 2005, Scott was responsible for trading about 20, uh, 10% of the S&P E-mini futures contract. So we're talking about some pretty incredible volume here. Uh, is a, a little mind-boggling, uh, and uh, now Scott focuses on trading both equities and futures. Uh, he's an expert scalper uh, and has been uh, using innate abilities here to quickly read the order flow and volume within price structures. Uh, so uh, risk disclaimer, I don't know if I need to go through that again. Uh, trading futures, equities, and digital currencies involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. And then there's some contact info uh, for more information on Bookmap there, if you like. Uh, so Scott, uh, uh, take it away. And then, uh, you know, when uh, when questions come in, um, I will, um, uh, you know, uh, interrupt you or uh, some pertinent questions here, and uh, we'll keep a conversation going back and forth uh, between, uh, you know, what you're showing uh, and uh, how we can get more insight into uh, some of your trading strategies. Great, yeah. Um, you know, if you want to keep this more as a conversation, um, that's good too, as far as, you know, when I'm talking about my history a little bit and if you have questions there. Um, sure. That, that's great too. Um, so, yeah, my name is Scott Pulsini. I've been trading about 20 years and um, I used to be a large scalper of the E mini SP. That's how I got my start in the markets. Um, I actually started trading. Uh, right before 9-11 in 2001. And um, I, I worked on the border, uh, the floor of the Board of Trade as a ARB clerk for about four years. And one of my friends got me a uh, job at uh, a firm called at the time King's Tree Trading, where they were, they had all these traders that were trading on the screen. It was pretty, pretty brand new back then, um, as far as, you know, they're trading even the S&P, the NASDAQ, the mini NASDAQ. So he got me a job there, and I'd always wanted to be a trader, um, and I used the you know, Chicago, Chicago Board of Trade as my springboard um, until I got my opportunity, and then I did, finally got my opportunity, and I went to King Street, and um, back then there was zero education, I mean, for screen trading, I mean, because it was so brand new. So it was basically throw you in front of the screen, and hopefully you can figure something out and make some money. And um, so I got there, and I proceeded to lose every day for my first month and a half. Um, trading where I was literally on the brink of getting fired. Um, I mean, I was probably within a, a few days of getting fired. That's how that's how poor I was. Just to put it in a perspective, my first day when they threw me in front of the screen trading one lot, one lots only, I lost twenty five hundred dollars trading the E-mini S and P trading one lot. So that that's that's really 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 poor trading. If uh, I mean, most, I'm sure most of the listeners know. How, how bad you have to be to, loot, to lose $2,500 trading one lot, scalping one lot on top of it. So it wasn't like I was holding it and losing 30 points on the trade. I was literally losing tick for tick for tick, and I still lost $2,500. So <clears throat> it was an auspicious beginning, uh, to say the least. And uh, the 9-11 happened, and they uh, closed the markets, uh, U.S. markets, for a week. And um, I was so desperate just to figure out, you know, what the hell I was doing that I went over to the German DAX, um, 
in the middle of the night to just try to get some experience. So I started scalping the German DAX with one lots and I started to pick up some things uh, that made sense. And uh, lo and behold, I started making a little bit of money. You know, I was making five hundred, a thousand dollars a night before the, you know, before the morning came around. So when the you know, and, and when you're a struggling trader just learning that that's a ton of money. I mean, it's a ton of money to anybody. But I mean, for me, especially if the brink of being fired, it was a big deal. So when the U.S. markets finally opened back up, I started to employ some of my strategies I learned in the uh, in the um, DAX, in the E-mini S&P. And one, it just the light just went on. And I I was so confident with what I was seeing in as far as the patterns and you know my my scalping ability I went to the um I went to the owner of the firm who remember was literally just about to fire me and I made him a bet that I would be the number one trader for 2002 um and at the time that our, our top trader had made I think he made like 1.8 million the year before 2 million so you're talking about a guy that I, you know, when I made this bet with him, I was still trading ones and twos. So talking about a guy that um, was making, you know, very little money, trading very little size. And I had I had such conviction that I was going to do it, that I had the balls, <laughs> pardon my language, to go in there and, and make this bet just because I knew I, I had figured it out. So the reason I tell you that is because you fast forward to today and, you know, after years and years of struggling, um, you know, because you know, the scalping went away for the way I traded back in, you know, low probably 2006-ish, 2005, 2006, you had low volatility in the, um, and the algorithm started to take hold in the marketplace. So, you know, I was one of the fastest scalpers in the world at the time, trading 10% of the E-mini volume every day, which was, <clears throat> you know, they traded back then, it was about 500,000 contracts a day in the E-mini, and I was 50,000 of those round turns every single day. Um, so that's how active I was, and I was one of the fastest in the world, but I was not as fast as a computer. And, um, you know, I literally went from making millions of dollars to couldn't make a dollar overnight. And it was uh, it was quite humbling, to say the least. You know, I thought I had made it. I thought I had figured it out. I thought I'd always be able to figure it out. And then all of a sudden, I couldn't make a single dollar. Um, and so then I spent, another, you know, the next five, six, seven years re trying to reinvent myself, trade longer term, um, longer term meaning, you know, minutes instead of seconds uh, and hours types of things. Still, still a, a day trader, but longer term for the way I was trading because I was, you know, seconds, milliseconds. So, <clears throat> you know, I spent years and years and years trying to come up with new ideas, new techniques, education, and I just, I just could not get anything to ever take hold. Um, so it, it was pretty desperate times. And I mean, I know a lot of traders, especially traders that were successful in that uh, period, went through the same thing I did where it was it was pretty easy to make money at the time and then all of a sudden you can't make a dollar uh it's it's a really real eye opening so <clears throat> um that leads me today when i was you know back to my conviction that i was talking about when i knew i i, I figured it out or i knew what i was seeing made sense to me and i knew i was going to crush it um that leads me to bookmap and i was introduced to bookmap uh, not too long ago actually only probably about 6 to 8 months ago by um, one of the top trading psychologists in the world, uh, Dr. Brett Steenbarger, who actually wrote a book, uh, Enhancing Trader Performance, that I am in throughout the book. He sat behind me for a year and kind of watched how I how I made money and what made me tick. And um, you know, the whole afterward is about my life. You know, when I started trading. But he, fast forward again to today, and I've always kept in touch with him, and he's always been a big um, cheerleader for me, wanting me to you know get back to the top. And he had called me one day and told me about this uh, software called Bookmap. And the minute I, the minute I started looking at it, I, I was I was blown away because, you know, the way I trade or the way I used to trade, um, you know, and, and all traders can relate to this nowadays. Um, you know, I used to watch the the price ladder, and that's all I used to watch most of the days. I mean, I would look at charts, I'd glance at charts, but I was I was total order flow oriented. So. Um, you're looking at the price ladder and any trader today can tell you looking at the price ladder you might as well be looking outside at, at a cloud because it means nothing most of the time right so you know you can't back back in my day when I was a scalper you can lean on size so if you look in the you look in the book and you'd see offers above you know two thousand three thousand four thousand 
you can you knew that was real. You knew if the market wanted to to go higher, it had to eat through those orders, and you can lean on that on those orders, right? So leaning on it meaning, you know, for newer traders, if if you want to get short, you can sell in front of those orders, and then if you're wrong, you can turn around and peel out into those orders, right? And especially as I became a bigger trader, that was especially useful for me, where I didn't have to risk a lot of money to you know to trade <clears throat> to put my trade on because I knew I can always turn around and get out. So again fast forward to today those orders usually mean absolutely nothing especially in the futures markets you know and every trader can relate to this where you, you know you see a thousand lot in the book and it, the market you know creeps up to it and all of a sudden it goes from a thousand to a ten lot and then there's an air pocket and the thing rips you know five points so that that's that's the kind of uh, change that has happened in the order book and you know once i started to look at book map and the way it displays the liquidity, meaning the orders. So when I, you know, when I'm giving examples you know, for the rest of this webinar, when I say liquidity, and Bruce talks the same way, um, I'm talking about you know resting orders in the book, as, as for, you know, as far as you know what you're looking at. When I when I show you, you understand what I'm saying. Saying, but um, so when I saw this, it was just mind blowing to me that things started to actually make sense again, where you can see the games that were being played by the algorithms. You can see the orders that weren't real, the areas where they would put put the orders in and then pull them out and put them in and pull them out, or where they put them in and they'd stay in for the entire day or for half of the day, where you know, okay, this is a real order, that that type of thing. So that, those were the eye-opening experiences I started to, you know, gain from, from using Bookmap. And, you know, Technically, I, I, I honestly think you can probably make a profit just looking at book map. Even if you didn't have a chart up, if you just played off the the liquidity in the order in the order book on the way you see it in book map and you know, how the orders come in and how it visualizes it, I, I honestly think you can probably be pretty profitable just doing that. But when you add in longer time frames, you know, um, longer bigger context or areas that, you know, you, you as individual traders look at, you know, everybody has the things that, that works for them or that they like to look at. When you add in this order flow and this liquidity that you, the way you see it in book map, it makes all the difference. So that that's, you know, what, what I, where I am right now. And I, again, I'm still relatively new. I'm very excited for the, there's so many things to learn in book map and <clears throat> Bruce, you do a good job having the daily webinars and, you know, real time webinars where it's not this, you know, cherry picking where you just pick these, you know, these perfect setups. I mean, you were in there real time talking about, you know, what you see in the liquidity, what you see in the, in the order flow. And, you know, that that has been very helpful, but there's just so much more to learn for me as well that it's just very exciting and trading is is actually fun for me again. And, you know, the sky's the limit with, with this with this software, in my opinion. Yeah, fantastic to hear, Scott. I mean, it's a uh, you know, it's quite a story uh, that you have, uh, and uh, uh, you know now now you're back in and and you know with all this experience and uh, embracing uh, uh, you know Bookmap uh, primarily as you know as the order flow uh, uh, vehicle here uh, and uh, being able to see it and use it like you did before, uh, which is which is just uh, fantastic. Um, so uh, yeah, let's let's dig in and, and take a, maybe a, a quick look at uh, you know some of your trades and some of the things you you were thinking about today or this week or or whatever. Sure, uh, I mean you know what what traders listening to this have to have to know <clears throat> before I get into this is one, I try to keep things as simple as possible and you know again I'm I'm pretty experienced 20 years of experience seeing markets of all size size and shape and. Uh, I highly recommend you make it as simple as possible. The more the more crap you throw in your chart, the harder the, the, the harder it is going to be for you to pull the trigger. Um, you know, most people know that, but it's worth it's worth saying again. Um, and then you also have to find what works for you, right? So, I mean, I can sit here and talk for the next five hours, and it may not resonate with you whatsoever as far as chart setups. I, I think the book map, the order flow liquidity will resonate with everybody because it's what's really happening in the market and volume drives price, price doesn't drive price, volume drives price. So if you know what the volume is doing, that is going to help you in any way you're looking at the market, right? So <clears throat> again, you have to you have to find, and especially for these newer traders, you have to find something that makes sense for you. You cannot try to um, you know replicate 
what somebody else is doing. I mean, you could to a certain extent, but then you've got to you've got to add in your your own ideas and the things that that work for you, or you you're never going to be profitable, right? You just one, you're always gonna you're always gonna have that scapegoat blame factor where when it, when a trade doesn't work, you're blaming the guy that you learned it from, and you're you're saying how bad it sucks, this doesn't work, right? You you have to take responsibility for your own ideas, and then you incorporate those ideas in into what you're you know what you're seeing in the charts and then also in, in the book map and liquidity um, and the other uh, huge bit of advice that um, I can give is you want to have as many variables as possible for the trade so that doesn't mean you know 50 things on your chart but the more things that you can add and I'll talk about this a little bit when I go into some of these trades um, more things you can add as far as so an example would be you know if, if I see an area in the chart that I like right and I, again I'm going to show you this but if I don't see liquidity there, if I don't see other traders willing to play at that price, why why in God's name would I want to trade at that price, right? Things like that. That's what I mean by variables. So um, hopefully that makes sense. Um, and then the other thing is <clears throat> that I'd like to um, advice wise is, you know, for those of you that just trade futures, I think you're doing yourself a disservice. And this is coming from a guy that made you know, millions and millions of dollars at the time trading futures. I never even thought about looking at a stock ever. Like I thought they were ridiculous. I thought they, you know, it was uncharted territory. It was like the wild, wild west where these these things can just do what they want when they want. But, and, and again, you, you will get some ridiculous moves in stocks, much more so than futures because um, some of these stocks are less liquid. But again, when you add in the book map uh, factor, it, it starts to make a lot more sense. And if you can have other things to turn to when these markets are dead, like this, you know, even the S&P that feels like you're watching paint dry for the last, you know, two months, basically 90, 95% of the time, you can have something you can go to where, you know, you're engaged again in, in your learning. And, and so my my best advice is, you know, for one, I'm just going to show you a couple stocks here today, but you'd be well served to, um, to look at the stock factor and I will do a, a quick plug for because you know I, I did not know anything about stocks again and um, SMB S as in Sam M as in Mary B as in Bob uh, SMB trading they they opened my eyes and, and taught me a lot about the stock side of things um, so if you guys are interested in the stock side I would highly recommend going over to the website I think it's smb.com or smbtrading.com because I, I can't I can't act like I just pulled out of this all of this out of my you know out of my hat. They taught me everything about stocks, but again, not from the book maps side, right? So I incorporated that, and then once I started doing that, things made even more sense to me. So um, that was just a quick plug because I have to give credit where credit is due there. Um, so a couple of these trades, let's see what we got here. We'll start. Um, <clears throat> I guess we'll start with equities. Um, so, you know, these are today and yesterday, these examples, just to show you, I'm not just, uh, not just cherry picking, right? So this is, um, this is Ameritrade today. Um, they, Charles Schwab came out with, and so the other thing with stocks too, is you don't want, you want to try to find stocks that have, um, that have a reason to be moving that day, right? You just don't want to just trade random stocks because if you're trading a stock that's not in play, meaning there's not news on it, um in some way shape or form then all you're doing is you're opening yourself up to getting whiplash by these algorithms right and everybody knows what i'm talking about anybody who's active in either the futures or stocks knows you know 90 percent of the time in, in in most of these most of these stocks or futures it's the algorithms just whipsawing the retail trader right so, and I'm also going to show you how to kind of avoid that in the futures as well. But in stocks, what you want to look for again is a reason for it to be trading that day, right? So you want to see high relative volume. So you want to see the, you know, say it trades a million shares a day. You want to see it trading three to five times that if, at least, right? Things like that. Or they came out with earnings or there's significant news, right? And the reason for that is because you are going to neutralize the algorithms on these kind of days because algorithms worst enemies are these big mutual funds, right? These funds, they get into these stocks uh, and, and futures and they do not care. They will buy, you know, say, say they, they, they get the order to buy, they will buy, they don't care. They're, they need to get in, right? That is the algorithm's worst nightmare because they are so used to just, you know, 
putting in their order, pulling it, putting in and pulling it, and all of a sudden this big money comes in and runs them over, it they literally have to shut down algorithms on days like you know news days because the algorithms will get killed because they don't have the wherewithal to lay off of a trade right because it's all it's all automated right so that's that's why you want to only be trading stocks that are in play per se um hopefully that makes sense yeah any questions on that so far bruce <clears throat> Um, no, not yet. Uh, uh, Peter was just uh, wondering, though, a bit about uh, or, or agreeing, basically, like uh, ES is good. It makes good sense when it moves. Uh, but uh, when it's starting to grind and really not going anywhere, uh, it can be uh, very, very uh, difficult if, uh, uh, you know, to, to try to grind out a profit uh, in that. But, uh, yeah, making good sense there on the equities. Yeah, and, and the ES is the number one, right? I mean, the thing will grind, especially lately. You literally want to pull your hair out. I mean, you can't, you can't. And that's the whole point, right? Instead of sitting there getting frustrated, forcing a trade, you know, in an area that just because you're just trying to get some kind of movement, right? A lot of these, a lot of the guys listening, you know, a lot of traders are they're trying to live off income from trading, right? So you can't have an income if the thing doesn't trade. So that's going to force you to put in a marginal trade in an area that looks okay, but you have to take it because you know this thing's gonna sit there in a four point range for the rest of the day. So that's why you wanna have other outlets to go to so you're not throwing your money away to these algorithms on days like the last two months in the E-mini S&P, right? So, and I'm gonna show you what you can kind of look for in the E-mini S&P and crude as well to kind of avoid that. But <clears throat> again, that's why you wanna have stocks is one of your, um, weapons as well. So this is TD Ameritrade that came out. Um, I use uh, Thinkorswim for my stock uh, charting and actual, actually futures charting now as well, besides Bookmap. But um, um, they came out today. Charles Schwab was rumored to buy them. Obviously, the, um, it wasn't well taken and it sold off hard at the uh, beginning of the day. So I'm going to show you here why Bookmap is so important, right? So if you're just looking at a chart, bar chart, which I would say 95% of people do, right? So just using Bookback alone gives you such an advantage over the majority of the traders is it's ridiculous. And you can see here, right? So if you're looking to get long this, you know, okay, I think this is a decent deal. What, now, why, why would you buy right here, right? I mean, there's really no reason. This thing is on a free fall. You're just gonna, you're just gonna try to catch a falling knife, right? So if you're just looking at a bar chart, you're, I mean, there's, in my eyes, I mean, yeah, it's, it's and I'll talk about the, this is the DBA daily value area, which is a, um, standard deviation from VWAP, um, but it's it's sloping down. I mean, from what I can see, there's really nothing that you can lean off of here. I mean, this is a four hour chart here and there's really nothing for the last few days that you can really trade off of either when it when it's free falling here. So it's like, what what do you do, right? So, um, and I'm, this is exactly why book map is so important, right? So this is, <clears throat> um, Okay, so this is this free fall, right? So this is the bottom of this free fall. So for people that aren't familiar with Bookmap, you know, the, these dark uh, dark red areas are, it's liquidity in the book, right? So it's, the darker it is, there's more liquidity meaning volume, right? So this is means there's resting bids in the book. There's a resting bid in the book here. There was resting a bid book here and they yanked it. So you can kind of see this too. This is kind of like a little game right here too. This isn't as pronounced, but, um, I mean, for like an algorithm where you see them putting in a poem, but you can see they put in liquidity as it ripped up and then they yanked it and then they put it back in. So it's like they weren't they weren't really wanting to buy there. So you kind of ignore that for now. But as it comes through, you can see if you're looking to buy, you know, and I'll go back again to this first slide. It's like, wh where where are you buying? I mean, you, you're just going to throw in an order. Good luck. Right. So here you can see liquidity so you can start to pay attention where you may want to get if you're if you're looking to get long you you can look at this liquidity and say okay um you know when i see the buyers or the sellers they're not winning anymore then i'll look to get long or if you want to get short and stay short how do you do that right so you, here's a perfect example here's liquidity eats right through it here's liquidity right through it it kind of looks like it might bounce but it can't get above this area right so and then and then the sellers come back in sells right through the liquidity sells right so when i say liquidity it's, it's these dark red lines it sells through it again and you can the bigger the bubble the heavier the selling is as well so that's important too um but you can see you know the sellers just are not relenting here so why in, in god's name would you want to get long i mean you could put a little feeler here but this didn't tell me anything i mean this is just i want to see it 
I want to see it get back above this liquidity where this liquidity was back above where the, the heavy sellers came in, right? And it really doesn't do that. It it peaks its little head above and then it just right back down, right back down, right back down. Now, this is where this is important, where we were talking about, you know, where do you buy it, right? And again, you're staring at a bar chart that this is, this is invisible information for you. And it's invisible information for 95% of the traders. Look at this liquidity that was in here before it even came down, it comes down. Now, look at the difference in the selling here versus here, 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 the size of the bubbles, right? This tells you, one, the sellers are not as strong. Buyers are fighting back, even though it's not blue yet. These 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 sell circles are even small. This bubbles are, are smaller. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. Um, how do I shrink this back down? <laughs> oh, here we go. Sorry about that. Um, so you can see the sellers are starting to lose a little steam, right? So then you see some buying. Now this is this is the biggest buy bubble anywhere. This entire, I mean, up from over here, right? So yeah, you can get long right here. So the whole thing is, you know, it's not going to be perfectly exact. You're not going to find the exact tick. Nothing in trading ever is. But now you know, okay, this area now now my ears are pricked, right? Now I'm going to pay attention. So it comes back up. So even if you did buy here and it starts to go against you, you can lean on this size. So it's, this is one of my favorite setups where markets come down in liquidity and then it refreshes, right? So you can see here, it ripped through this liquidity, this didn't refresh. It ripped through this liquidity, this didn't refresh. Comes down here, selling dries up and people put more orders in. Now that, all that does, it doesn't, now don't get me wrong, it doesn't mean it can't come back down and rip right through this, right? But you have a reference area so you can say, Okay, even if, again, even if you buy the high at the time, which was, you know, you're risking 40, 40, 50 cents, you could put your stop below here and say, okay, well, if they eat through this liquidity as well, I'm wrong. And you're gonna be wrong a lot in trading. I don't care what system you're using, right? But you're gonna be wrong a lot less using Bookmap, I can I can tell you from personal experience. So even, even if you buy the high and then it starts to rip against you, you don't have to panic out. You say, okay, I'm leaning on this side. It's just like I used that example earlier, back in, in my day when I was scalping, you can lean on the three, four, 5,000 lots in the book to get out. So you say to yourself, I'm long, again, even if you buy in a bad spot, and I'm putting my stop below this liquidity line, right? If it rips through it, I'm out, I'll reassess. Never even comes near it, and then, then you see the buyers rip through liquidity, buy, 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 buy. I mean, you can see, so you can just see it, right? So again, rip, someone put a big order in, they, they ate it up, it looked like it was gonna sell off, no sellers, tiny bubbles, buy again, and then the big buyers started coming in, right? So that leads up to this next, uh, I mean, so you can see this. So technically you're risking, even if you bought at that poor spot I was showing, you're risking 50 cents to make, and you can see it's just, again, this is just like that on the way down, it was all sellers. On the way up, there's, where are the sellers? There's no reason. And that's another thing Bookmap is so great for because so many traders, including myself, when you get a winner, you want you want your profit. You're like, then then you start to panic. Okay, when do I get out? Like I don't want to lose this profit. I need this. I need to make this money. If you're using this, you, you don't have to panic. You, you're not getting out until you see the sellers doing something, right? So you're long. I mean, show me where the sellers are doing anything. You get it rips through this liquidity. I mean, you get this little blip. Big deal. Bigger sellers come in. Bigger sellers come in. Here you might say, okay, they might the sellers might be engaging again. I'm going to keep an eye on this if it comes below this. So again, you're you're here right around 48.35. You say, okay, I'm not going to puke just because I I'm not going to puke my long uh, just because I see the first seller come in. But if it gets below where these buyers ripped out took out this liquidity down in this area somewhere, then then you can get out of some or all. You know, again, you, there's nothing wrong with taking some type of profit, but the way to be a successful trader is to hold for multiples, right? So you're risking 50 cents. You want four, five, six, seven times your money on a trade. And this helps you, you know, get that four, five, six, seven times your money because there is no reason to get out of this trade. You can just see buy, 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 rips through here. And, you know, it goes up to, it goes up to $50. Um, let's see. Right. So here's another example. This is this is the same trade. So say I was long, say I, I sat through all this nonsense because nothing's really happening. Then when it finally gets to 50, this is another one of my favorite setups where yes, buyers are winning. Yes, buyers are winning. Buyers are winning. And then you get through this liquidity and then now you got to start to ask yourself, okay, where, where are these buyers? Like this is not buying. They're starting to sell it. This isn't heavy selling, but 
you know, for these guys that just bought here, they're starting to, so, and that's the other thing too, for, for the traders out there, you, you want to think like, you want to think about the markets like if you had the position on, right? So if you bought a, a, a bunch here and a bunch here, and then all of a sudden you're looking at this and you it's not going higher and you, you don't see any more buying, what are you thinking to yourself? You're thinking, oh shit, this is, this is not good, right? And again, part of my language, I may swear a little bit, but I'll try to keep it to a minimum. Um, us traders tend to swear it's the way it's our only outlet when we're staring at these screens but but you can see here the buying dried up and then when it got back below this area again think you're this just think as if you're this trader that bought this this area once it starts to sell off you're like oh no i'm i'm in big trouble and then it pukes and then it just goes straight down from there right not really heavy but the point is these guys are caught and if it can't hold above these liquidity areas why do you want to be in the trade right get out reassess that's another thing traders do you know they're like they're they're because you hear in all these trading education and these webinars you want to make multiples like i said yes you want to make multiples but that doesn't mean just holding on blindly right you want to if you don't see what you want to see you don't get out just because you think you have to make four or five times your risk that that's ridiculous right this, and this is what this is why this program is so powerful. This tells you what's really happening. It's not just a chart, right? It's not just a, a bar chart that's showing you, right? So this was the move all the way up, right? So it's like, again, yeah, you could have got it that, that this the first liquidity levels were at VWAP, but then it got above there. So you're thinking, if you're just looking at this chart, you're like, well, I'm not getting out until after it gets above, or if it trades below VWAP, which is fine. But you know, if when you when you incorporate incorporate that view with the actual volumes that's transacting, you can be out right here. You can be out at the exact high because you saw there was no buying, right? So, and then ended up trading down. I think I went down another dollar and a half from there. But you, you get the point, right? I mean, that's just one example. That's from today. Okay, so. Um, so I'll give you another example. So this next one uh, was yesterday. This was Target. So this is an example. I'm sorry, I got a little ahead of myself. Bruce, any questions from you or anybody else? Um, um, questions are, are coming in. Um, it, they're more kind of technical at the moment. Um, I, I actually have a question for you, though, Scott. And you're, you're starting to answer it here because um, as you're looking at some of the uh, bookmap charts there, uh, I, I was very curious. It, um, that because it's like, okay, well, volume moves price. Uh, you're looking for it to test into this liquidity. You're leaning against liquidity as well. Uh, you know, you're reading it uh, uh, and assessing it uh, correctly like that. Um, but then, like, do you look back at what happened there and start to um, uh, think about it in terms of not like the volume traded here, but there are traders here and these were their actions and this is what I'm looking for if uh, you know, these traders remain in control or if they're tested and, and feel a squeeze, uh, then I'm looking for something different. Right. Well, of course. Right. So, I mean, if, the, if, if this does this and then it comes back to this area right here where the buy, the big buying came in and then just kind of trades back and forth. then yeah, I mean, I'm not, I'm not getting short just because the buyers didn't win right away. Right. So I would change my tune if it kind of hangs out here a little bit and then I see buying come back in, then I would probably get long and try to ride it up to this liquidity level, right? But, you know, I know from my short experience using Bookmap that, and, and my um, wealth of experience trading order flow, that these guys that took out this, that took out this area are in big trouble if this thing starts to sell off, right? So the whole idea behind this is risk reward. So you want to put on trades where you're risking very little and you catch a flyer, right? So we pointed it out on the long. You're risking 50 cents to make, you know, a dollar and a half. Here, you know, even if you put the short on here and you're not sure yet because there's, you know, this is not heavy selling. This is this is um this is kind of light selling, but you can sell here, you sell right below 50, you're risking up to, you know, this area here. I'd say 20, you're risking 25 cents. Right, so the whole idea is what Bookmap helps you do is find the areas for you to get your multiple risk reward. So only here I'm risking a quarter. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Okay, I lose a quarter. But if I'm right, I make a dollar and a half. Right, and that's exactly. I mean, your next. I mean, look at this. Your next liquidity isn't down until 49. So you're you're risking a quarter to make a dollar. Right. That that that's how you make money trading. So does that answer your question? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I'm also curious. Um, uh. On, you know, some of these examples, I mean, these examples are, are you know, uh, they, they look great here. I'm wondering how often do you get stopped out? 
Uh, and uh, uh, because, uh, you know, as you mentioned, uh, you're fine, I'll take the risk I'm looking for, I'll risk the 25 cents, but I know I'm going to make a dollar. Right. Yeah, I mean, I, I get stopped out, um, I wouldn't say a lot, but I absolutely get stopped out. Every trader does, but I, I get stopped out a lot less often with using book map than using bar charts a lot less often, right? So, and the thing is you can get back into it. So even if I'm stopped out, again, you have to be wrong four times just to make up for the one winner you had, right? So that that long, I was risking 50 cents to make a dollar and a half, right? So that's, you know, six, six times your, six times, or I'm sorry, four times your risk there, a little less than four times. And then same thing here. So it's like, yeah, you're gonna be wrong, but when you're wrong, make it small. And then when you, when you catch these runners, you know, that's all the difference. So yeah, I mean, I get stopped out like, like any other trader, but, Again, there's so many traders not using this program yet. So I also think this is a sweet spot for this. I mean, I know you don't like to hear that because you want as many traders using this as possible. <laughs> I want as few traders as using this as possible because this is information that most people can't see, right? And this is the this is the edge, right? This is the edge you need when you incorporate it with other things. So that leads me into my next slide about incorporating it in a, in a, like a chart type of thing, right? So this was Target yesterday. At the open, uh, they beat, they crushed their earnings, sold off hard, big volume. So down here is the relative volume. Relative volume for the traders that don't know is for this five minute time, or this is a two minute, this is five minute, we'll look at five minutes. For this five minute time period, this thing traded almost, it looks like eight or nine times normal for that five minute time period at, you know, 725. I'm in Arizona, so that's eight, um, 825 Chicago. So this was the open, but it still was five times, five times normal volume for that time period. So, and again, the reason this is, this is happening is because this stock is in play. You don't want to trade a stock that looks like this, where the relative volume is nil, because that means the algos are going to be whipsawing you back and forth all day long. Granted, you could probably put up a good fight using Bookmap, but why? Why even mess with it, right? Trade the stocks that are in play. So, so this is, so this is VWAP. This I believe it's blue. I'm colorblind, so um, tell me out if I'm wrong. But this is the VWAP, and then the, these outer edges are uh, two standard deviations. So it's the, it's called the uh, daily value area. Again, I um, I give that um, I give props to uh, SMB Trading, uh, the future side. He, he, uh, Merritt Black taught me that. If you want to learn more, you can go go there and learn from him about the charting and the and the DVAs. But um, so again, I'm keeping this as simple as possible. I don't want to confuse myself. And you also got to remember, you want to you want to be looking at areas or indicators that you know the big hedge funds are looking at, or the big traders or majority of traders, because you you know you want people behind your trade, right? Because you obviously most people don't have the size to push the market where they want. So you got to you got to be looking at things that you know these big funds are looking at, and big funds look at VWAP. These big funds look at deviations of VWAP. So that's all this is here. So it comes down here, you see it's still really high volume, you see a buying tail basically right to it, and then it, and then it shoots off of it, right? So yeah, I mean, if you're trading just the chart here, there's a good chance you catch this, but you know, when it, when it opened up, this was, this, was, uh, this was the bottom of DVA, this was the standard deviation right here, you would have got, you'd have lost $2, right? So it's not just the DVA, so I'm gonna show you this. So yes, and this is what I'm talking about, incorporating other variables. So. I want to see certain things in my chart charting, but if I don't see the confirmation in book map, I don't take the trade, right? So that's what a lot of traders have to discipline themselves because guys, you know, the thing's trading crazy. Guys just want to, they want to get involved and you've got to see more than just charts in my opinion. So book map wise, um, yeah, so th this is, this is a good example. So this is kind of the example I showed you at the high of, um, of um, TD Ameritrade where so this was that sell-off that i showed you at the at the open and it, it rips right through liquidity and so this is the bottom of dba right here are you gonna are you just gonna jump up and buy it no if you're looking at this not right now i'm not because i there's no buying i mean they ripped through this liquidity line right there was a ton of orders they obviously were real somebody somebody hit it hard somebody hit it hard again somebody hit it hard again then it kind of ripped in their face okay i'm still not long i want to see if it comes back down here, are these sellers going to engage again and push it down to this liquidity? And then I may consider down here. What happens is, is it sells off through this liquidity, heavy, heavy liquidity, gets above it, tries to go below it. Look at the difference in the selling. There's no selling. There's actually buying, actual buying. So when I see it, and then you get more liquidity put in, right? So 
this is another one of my favorite setups where you see it rip through the liquidity. They take it out. It didn't refresh, but it never was able to push lower. So what's that telling you if it took out the liquidity? Now there's nothing there and they, they're, it's still not going lower, right? So the minute you start seeing the buying, you can get in. When, if it gets above this, so the way I trade is once it gets above this area where the sellers came in, this liquidity was, I would buy right around here when I start seeing these blue bubbles and I would risk back down probably right around here. I probably wouldn't even risk it that much because this liquidity came in, I probably would have risked it right here because if it comes back here, it's going down to here in my eyes. Um, and that's another thing that I've learned from Bruce is these markets tend to trade to the liquidity, which makes all the sense in the world, right? These funds, they need to get filled and they're not just gonna jump up and buy millions and millions of contracts, right? So tr they try to force these markets into their resting orders, right? I'll get a little more into that a little later, but, the point is for this trade, I'm long here, I'm risking here. So this is, you know, 1890. I'm risking down 1850-ish, maybe a little less, maybe 1860. So we're talking 50 cents, right? And this thing rips, you know, <laughs> you're going to see how much this rip. But this alone would have been a good profit. Even if you're like, okay, I'm just going to hold it up to 120 where this liquidity is. And that, that's a great trade. You're risking 50 cents to make a dollar fifty. That's three to one. That's incredible. Um, so show you what this ended up doing. So this thing goes all the way up to, granted, I mean, you had liquidity levels that it played around in, but it gets, this thing went from 118 to 126. So is that a good risk reward, you know, where, you know, the first time I saw something that was worthwhile was right around this area where I would be considering getting out, right? So you're talking about risking 50, 60 cents to make $8 on the trade, like almost instantaneously, right? So it's like, you know, within within a half hour, hour, which is incredible. So, you know, if you're looking, if you are long, or if you want to get short, either one. If you are long, you're you're looking at things like this, right? So here's this heavy liquidity. It gets up to 126. Buying comes in, liquidity doesn't pull. Comes again, heavier buying comes in, takes out that liquidity. Still can't get through it. Here's the selling. Comes back again. Buying starts to dry up sells off again, now you get the liquidity put in. Now now it's go time if you wanna either get short or or get out of your position. Now you say, okay, now I got somebody to lean on, that's this. I'm risking, you know, you can sell it right around in this area here. I'm risking, you know, 30, 40 cents to make this thing turned around and sold off another couple bucks, I think. So that that's what I'm talking about, about the incredible edge this affords you if you're using this in conjunction with your charts, right? So. Um, hopefully that makes sense. Let me see if I got the longer. Yeah, so I mean, you can see this it sold off. Actually, it sold off like four dollars from that area I was showing you, right? So again, you could trade it from both the long and short side. Uh, you know, not that you have to, but that's how much book app, book map helps you. Again, if you're looking at this, yeah, you can use the DBA, but you use the DBA right here. This deviation of VWAP. Okay, you sell it. You're right for a second, and then it just rips in your face, right? So you're not really using the DBA until you get the um, confirmation of the volume, which I just showed you. So that was uh, that was my other stock example. Um, any questions, Bruce? Yeah, a few questions here um, regarding. Uh, uh, so on your higher time frame charts, uh, you're looking at the DBA there. Um, are you uh, do you look at volume profile at all? Um, or do you do you also uh, uh, look at the VWAP uh, quite a bit and, and make decisions off of VWAP or above and below VWAP? Yeah, so I, you know, I was taught when I, especially with stocks um, and, and futures for the, you know, recently in the last year, how to use the DBA, how to use market profile and uh, and um, value areas, uh, CDAs and DBAs, things like that. Um, again, it was just using going out to market profile. Um, I use it a little bit, and I'll show you in my in my examples uh, of, of the futures. But I, I try, again, all I'm doing is trying to keep it as simple as possible. And I want to, because when you start merging um, these market profiles day by day by day, what I've noticed, there's too much, um, there's too much art in it, right? And you don't want something that is too much art in your trading, because again, you want to be using things that these big traders, these big funds are using. And you like cutting off a, a market profile value area at a certain spot because you think something, that's all fine and good, but that's too much for me. That's too much for my brain to handle. And, I, and again, that's not me, that's not me using areas that I know potentially the big, the big money is 
going to be involved in. So I use Market Delta a little bit. I mean, Market Delta, I'm sorry, Market Profile a little bit, um, but I just use it for like, you know, the highs and lows of balance areas and then um, uh, high volume nodes, HVNs, which I'll show here in a second. But other than that, I'm just using the DBA, um, uh, I'm sorry, the VWAP and then the DBA, which is just the standard deviations of the VWAP. It's a two standard deviation. You can, it's the, it's the default on uh, Thinkorswim. And then, um, then I also use charts as far as um, um, conviction areas and things like that. I'll show you, but that's a long answer for, I don't use it that much, if that makes sense. Got you, okay. Sorry, sorry I went on a tangent there. Um, a couple more here. So this is uh, this is the mini S and P yesterday. So what I like to use in my futures and stocks, but more so in the futures, um, because again, like I talked about earlier, you do not want to be trading these futures markets when you have no volume trading, right? Like, I mean, look at this. You you do not want to be participating because all you're doing is you're getting whipsawed, right? That's why the market's doing this, because that's when these algos turn on and whipsaw you back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. You think it's going to break? No, because back up. You think it's going to break? Or you think it's going to break here? No, because back up. So you don't want to get involved until you see high relative volume, right? So here you could have, but this is why I point this out here, right? So you see right here, this move up to the, again, this is this is VWAP, this is the first standard deviation higher, this is the first standard deviation lower. And you can see how even overnight when there's no volume, again, because this is what these algos are set up to trade off of, right? Because humans aren't running it, so they, they know where the DBA is. So it comes up here, so this is why I point this out. You can see this high volume move right about here it goes into DBA high, right? So I wouldn't personally, so if, if you're getting high vol relative volume, yes, the buyers are winning, but somebody's selling it too, right? So that's what you got to remember when you see these up bars on high volume. Yeah, the, the buyers are, 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 are taking the offers, right? They're taking them heavy quickly, but that doesn't mean there's still people selling it or, or the thing would have ripped off the page. So if you see the high relative volume, somebody's fighting back. What I like to see, and I'm going to show you this in my crude example, if I do see this buying, I want to see the market hanging up, hanging above where this buying came in, right? You don't want to see this big buying coming in, kind of just like I showed in the stock examples and the in the book map examples. You don't want to see this big buying come in and then it sells off, right? Like, what, what are these guys thinking? All these guys that jumped in, right? So, in this example, you know, they they bought here and then it sold off. Volume dries up and then it comes back to the high. So this is this is key, right? So you get all this big buying. Now you get to move back to the DBA, the, again the standard deviation of VWAP, and look at the volume, right? Where, where where are these buyers at? Where are the buyers at when it when it makes new highs? So this alone you can trade off of, right? But now when you incorporate um, Bookmap, you get a whole, you know, you get you get the added variable that gives you the confidence to put on the trade, right? So this this is it right here. And now look at this. This is this was that heavy volume period that I showed you, which the relative volume was extremely heavy. Sells off, and sellers are pretty moot. Comes up here again, big buying. Oh, and then it right back down. So it's like, okay, so these guys that bought here and these guys that bought here, and now they're like, oh shit, like it's not going higher. And then you can see, so it bought here through this resting liquidity. Somebody wanted these orders. Somebody put these offers in and kept them in. Somebody took them, which is fine, but whoever took them, immediately they're off sides, right? Comes back up, more liquidity, liquidity here, they take some liquidity here, again, sells off. Here they try to buy, sells off again. So if, you, if you're long here, if you're the big trader that bought this, what are you thinking when it comes down here? You're thinking, God, please let this come back to this area so I can get out of this trade, right? That's exactly how I used to trade. When I was scalping, when I would buy huge size and it would, I just kept running into orders, running into orders, and that's what this is happening here. And then it would rip against me. I would literally just hold my breath because I would have 2000 e-mini contracts on, like literally ready to crap my pants, pardon my language again, because now it's, you know, it's four points in my face. You know, what am I going to do? And I didn't have the luxury of having this either, knowing what was really going on. I was just looking at the order book, you know, the dome, which is useless in my eyes nowadays. So anyway, so it comes back up here. And now look, look at the difference. Huge buying, huge buying. Well, that's that's not so much huge buying anymore. So this alone should have alerted you, okay, something's wrong. And that's that same area in the chart that I showed you um, that there's no buying, 
right? So not only here, here's what I'm talking about, about the confluence, right? The variables, you have DVA high, you have low volume. If you're just looking at the chart, right? Then you couple that with the low, there's no buying, right? These guys are off sides, there's no buying. Then they start to sell it. So the minute you see these sellers come in again here, you can short it and you can either risk it to above here because they're still rusting the lick or you know you sell it at 18, 17 and a half and risk it above. Look how heavy this got as this market started to come up here. So you can put your, you can get, stop out above here, right? Yeah, you're, you're risking, you're risking three, three points, which is nothing in the I mean, Maybe nowadays that's like a humongous move the last two months, but you're risking three points to potentially catch something, right? So now you're in the trade and it ends up, um, you know, then it does this, it comes down to VWAP and you can, you know, especially in this market, because you don't know this is going to happen. This was the, um, they, they don't think the trade deal is going to get done again, the same nonsense that comes out, you know, every other day it feels like. Um, but even if you sold here and you caught it down here, I mean, this is, this is, th you know, 13, you, you made, you made four, four points, which is a huge, huge trade in these markets, right? But if you were, you know, if you're, smart enough to hold on to this and say, okay, I'm just going to see if I can get this bigger move because I, who cares? I don't want four points. I want a big move. And I think today is going to trade, you know, you're still risking up to 20 here and then you, you get lucky and you catch this, this huge move. So again, here is this, here is this heavy volume that come, that came in when they announced that the trade deal might be off, right? So heavy, but relative volume rips through everything again. So if you want to get long, which is, you know, most of the time that's the right trade in these markets because all it does is bungee jump every single time and sells off. But where, if you're looking at this, where where are you getting long at? Like, you know, I, I will show you an area in the longer term chart, but it still doesn't help you, right? So this is what I was talking about, the uh, high volume node stuff. So if I'm trading the higher, higher time frame, this is a good area to get long, right? Because you see this balance area that it broke out from. Balance area means two-sided trade. It was back and forth, back and forth for days and days and days and days and days. And anyone who traded the mini S&P was tortured this whole time, right? So it broke out here. So now it's coming back down into the high volume node of this, of this balance area. High volume node means where most of the trade occurred. So yes, you can, this is a good place to get long, but where, where are you getting long? Like you're just going to blindly, I and mean, this is not a defined area. I mean, you, you, you can't have the um, point of control that's still not perfect, right? So it's like, if I'm just trading off charts, yes, I know this this area, general area is probably a good trade, but wh where am I getting long, right? So you don't, you don't wanna just try to catch a falling knife, right? So and this is where book map becomes so valuable um, as it comes down here. That was the short. So this is down at the low. So now look at this, right? So you're, if you're if you're wanting to get long or you're short, there's no reason to get out of your trade if you're short during this move that during that announcement selling 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 through liquidity here's liquidity selling through liquidity selling through liquidity it looked like it might bounce. Heavy selling comes in again. Now look at this right. So this was in here waiting. You know there are some serious serious buyers here and this thing is not pulling right. So it comes down you get heavy sellers. Heavy sellers again you get you get kind of a Ricochet. So, you, I mean, I personally got long right here. So you get long right here and, and you, you know, you're risking, you, know, you get a risk five points, but the market was actually moving then. So that's not that big of a risk in this, in this kind of trade. But I mean, if you're getting long here, all you got to do is put your order right below this liquidity, because again, you're leaning on this. If, if it goes through this, which it does sometimes, a lot of times, that's fine. You're wrong and you get out, but at least you know where, where to get out, right? Instead of just looking at a bar chart guessing, right? So, you know, you get a little bit of a rally, then this is this is where most traders lose profit and puke out and then, you know, bang their head against the wall because it looks like it's going to go and then it comes down one more time. So even if you dig it out here, you say, okay, let's see what happens here. Now look at the look at the, the selling here compared to here and here and here and here. You can get right back in. So even if, even if you were a terrible trader here, which I've done many, many times because you don't want to give back your profit or you, you want to scratch a trade because you think you're wrong, you get back in when you start to see this dry up again, you get back in right here. And now you're risking, this is 92 and a half, you're risking 90, you're risking down to 89, you're risking three and a half points, right? And then of course, in typical ES fashion, turns around and rips, you know, the rest of the day. Let's see here.
yeah, I mean, you can't, I don't have the shorter term chart for the, the move up, but then it just does this, right? It, which it does every single time. So the point is, Bookmap helps you find the areas where other traders want to want to get filled and want to trade. That's what you can lean on instead of just buying blindly on the chart. So hopefully that made sense. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, looking at this, uh, Scott, I mean, um, you know, you can make sense now, or, you know, for pattern traders out there. I mean, you're looking at basically a double bottom, you know, pattern here. But you have now context uh, looking at the volume within that pattern uh, and then the liquidity within that pattern. So, right. uh, and, and you're comparing that with your higher time frame as well. Uh, and, uh, uh, and then you're, you're, uh, you're splicing into trades when you see uh, some sort of edge uh, with the, uh, the volume starting to take place on the other side. Right, exactly, exactly. So, so go ahead. do you ever? I'm wondering. I mean, do you ever? Um, uh, you always wait until the buying comes in on the other side. Um, yeah, absolutely. Why? Why would you? Why would you not? Right. Like, I, why do I want to buy if nobody else is buying? That's, you know what I mean. It's it's that right. simple. Right? Well, I, I mean, mean, a lot of traders. I mean, they they see it trade into high liquidity and uh, they they'll go along with the limit you know, the limit buy orders, or, or maybe they see it starting to exhaust out um, and uh, on the sell side and before they, they get in kind of before the buyers uh, start to get in. Uh, it's, I mean, it's risky, right, of course. Right, exactly. I mean, there's nothing wrong with piecing in, right? So for instance, if you're trading, a, you're trading multiple contracts, there's nothing wrong with putting on, you know, a portion here, a quarter. That's right, exactly. I mean, if you, if, you know, you don't have to wait until you get confirmation that, you know, that everyone says that's such a fallacy for, comp you know, you want to, that's fine. You can put in a little bit because you can lean on this. You can put on the full size, but don't be surprised if it rips through is what I'm saying. Right, if you start right. to see this combined with this, it's a much better trade is all I'm right. saying. But yeah, you can absolutely, if you're aggressive and you think, okay, this thing, they're loading up here. I don't think they, they have they have what it takes to get through this area. By all means, buy right here. That's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. I just don't like to, because I've seen too many times where the buyers just don't step up and then they rip right through all this. I don't care how heavy this is. If there's no one buying it, it's, it's going down, right? So right, I, I totally agree. I mean, I've been on the other side of that so many times. Um, so uh, yeah, I, I usually wait for the confirmation on the uh, on the buy side as well. Right. So um, one more example here, and I gotta take off. Let's see here. Um, so this is crude. Um, this was today, right? So this is kind of the exact opposite of um kind of what i just showed you right so uh, you know in a longer term chart let me see if i can find that long term e mini chart where's that at sorry these aren't labeled right so here it kind of you know this balance area rips out holds holds the the high volume node in here where all the trade occurred held and then went higher right so over the next two days it's it's been higher so crude um, again, this is called, you know, putting things in context, using higher time frame for certain areas, right? It doesn't always have to be scalping. I mean, you want to, you can uh, absolutely use higher time frames and then just use, um, you know, book map to, to help you, help you get in. So this was crude today. Um, let's see if I can find this. So this is a good example opposite, right? So this was crude for the last, you know, two weeks. I mean, look how defined this balance area is, right? So this thing rips lower um, yesterday, and it looks like this it's done, right? When you usually get this type of move out of this balance area, this thing is, you know, this thing's going down five bucks. What happens is this is a false breakout, right? So you using this in conjunction of with book with book map makes all the difference, right? So if you know, okay, I do not want to be short here because this thing it, it should have broken down now it's back to the high volume node again right here in the middle where all the, the majority of the trade occurred it's back here overnight it kind of balanced right but now when the market opens up you start to see this there you do not want to be short this market right i don't care if you see liquidity on every level in in, in cl you want to be looking for areas to be long right so th this is what i'm talking about you don't want to I think you could make make a living just trading straight book map, just staring at that liquidity. But this is what how you can just go, you can be above and beyond all traders. Most traders is when you know you want to be long and then know the areas to get long. Does that make sense? 
Yeah, absolutely. Right. So, so this is the open, right? So seven o'clock my time on Mountain Standard. So you see again, this is the key. You see the high relative volume to to pique your interest, right? Here we go. We rip up. Now this is the difference between that ES chart that I showed you, the the ES chart that I showed you. I'll just show you really quickly. Um, <clears throat> This was, this was it, remember they bought it here and then it just went straight below, right? So that's not a good sign if you wanna be long. What is a good sign if you wanna be long is when you see that heavy relative volume, sorry, I'm all over with these charts, and then it holds above it, right? So you get all these buyers taking out, I'm gonna show you this in book map in a second, taking out these, these orders, again, because for it to be high relative volume, there has to be two-sided trades. So there are offers in the book saying they didn't think this was going to go up and these buyers just took it then the buyers kept it above this area that's key right just if you're trading off the chart you know even if you wanted to get long you get long right here and risk it below this right but below this bar here but it was holding above and then when you add in so knowing this knowing it's high relative volume knowing a lot of traders are caught short if this thing rips knowing that and then adding in your book map um, signals is all the difference right so this was the open, this is it right here, right? So you see the heavy buying come in, rips out this liquidity. This is this high volume bar that I just showed you, the high relative volume, rips out this liquidity, rips out this liquidity, kind of stalls here. Again, I mean, there's there's no reason to, you know, if you have a bunch on, you can start to monitor it here. If it starts to go back below where it ripped out liquidity, yeah, you can, you, you can get out of some. But there's really not a reason to get out until you see it buying in this liquidity, buying in this liquidity. You could see the sell, the buying is starting to dry up a little bit. These bubbles just aren't as big. And then you see the sell, the big sell bubbles come in, right? So there was nothing like that until here. So my point is, you know, there's nothing wrong with getting out a portion of a portion of this, right? And but the thing is, you know, this thing is probably going higher. So you know, get out of a little bit just to make a profit, just because crude could can, and as anyone who trades this market knows, this thing could turn around and rip all the way down. But Book map aside, seeing the buyers and winning, you know you are in an area that is completely bullish. This is a completely bullish sign, this fate, this false breakout, right? So um, you know that you are on the winning side. You're looking for spots to get long. Um, so you know, once even once they started selling off, like I said, you can get out of some, but as long as it's holding these other liquidity areas, you just you just hold on and I don't have my computer actually shut down. I wasn't able to um, um, show you the rest of this, but on the on the bar chart, you can see it just ended up, you know, I mean, just went another dollar and a half, two dollars, right? So, so that, that that's just showing you different ways to look at look at this. Where you, yes, charts are great, especially in you don't always get these clear cut of situations. First and foremost, right? I mean, this happens what. 2% of the time where you get like a false breakout like this, which is screaming long. But when you use this to, in conjunction with book map, especially to find your areas, then it's, it's just golden. Like you are, you are leaps and bounds above 95% of the traders out there. Ah, oh, fantastic, Scott. Um, some, uh, some really nice uh, uh, charts here and, and nice examples, um, especially I like with the, uh, you know, not not only looking at the higher time frames, but then also um, looking. I mean, you're looking at something very specific, something you know that works. Uh, it works for you. Uh, not only at the high time frame, but then in book map, you're looking for the volume. You're looking for the context between that volume and that liquidity, uh, and retests or or specific areas. Uh, starting to understand the traders within uh, that price action. Uh, so uh, and then looking forward to continue uh, a, a certain way. Um, right. So, yeah, re re really nice, uh, really nice stuff. Um, let's see, uh, uh, Scott, you've got to get going here. So uh, here's his. Yeah, here's I can, I can his... answer some questions, a couple of questions. I got about maybe about 10 minutes. OK, great. Um, I'm uh, scrambling here to answer as many as I can. And then I've got kind of a short list here for you as well. Um, one of them that, that's been asked several times is about your volume settings. Uh, you know, how are you filtering for it and what exactly are you looking for? Or are you using the default settings? Everything is default. Again, I don't know enough about the program yet, uh, which is even more exciting, like I said earlier, but everything is default. The only thing I change is the colors because I'm colorblind. Like I said, I'm red, green, color deficient. So I can't tell the difference between red and green. So I use blue and red 
Uh, everything uh -huh. else is, is uh, default that you have everything set up. And again, why change anything? If it works, why would I ever change it, right? So it, it's perfectly fine, the default settings that I use. Right, right, okay. Uh, so uh, uh, that is actually funny. Um, I, I, I never realized that you were colorblind, and I was wondering why you always looked at the the dark blue um, uh, volume dots. Yeah, uh, so really not fun uh, playing golf. I can tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, there's some questions, a, a lot of nuances, a, a lot of a lot of questions about the you know the uh, VWAP and the DVA, etc. But the uh, um, the uh, uh, a question here that I thought was uh, pretty interesting um, on your trade management. Um, are you, uh, you are you front running high liquidity, uh, or are you waiting for the first test to hit into it, and then waiting for follow through on it? Or I mean, like where are you taking your profits? Uh, you went over your stops many times, uh, but your your take profits. Uh, how are you managing those? Well, profits I take the same as you know. I don't just get out just to get out, right? So it's like. I wait till it gets near liquidity. So for instance, if this would come up here and then I start seeing red bubbles, I'll get out, right? I know, why, why would I, you know, so if, if I see the buyers aren't winning before this liquidity and then I see selling coming in, I don't need to see a test of this to, to get out of some of my, or all my position. I know buyers are kind of drying up, sellers are engaging, and it also has to get through this area to go higher. So I, you know, why, why mess with it? But the, the whole point is, like I showed you in those earlier samples, um, like the Ameritrade one, you know, it's like you can hold this thing or even target, um, you can hold it forever until you start to see, like right here, what, tell me why you need to get out, right? So right. If, it, if it got to this liquidity, again, if it gets close and I start seeing red bubbles come in, then I'm, then I'm gonna probably, you know, I might find another area that I blew through and put my stop just below there, or I might get out of some right away. Um, but I, I'm not doing anything until I see the sellers winning. Like there's, this is why this is so incredible because you don't have to just blindly take profit. You, you want to take profit for a reason. You don't want to take profit just because it's at three times your multiple of what you risk when, when you could have made eight, right? I just showed you a trade in, in target. You could have made $8 on a 50 cent risk. So if you're just looking for three, for three times your money, you get out at a dollar 50, you are you are fuming the rest of the day because you cost yourself an extra six dollars and fifty cents because you wanted to follow your rules of getting out at three times your profit, right? Until the market shows you that you need to get out, why do you need to get out? And I'm bad at it too. Don't get me wrong. The last webinar I showed you an area where I was short crude and it just was huge selling through liquidity, huge selling through liquidity, huge selling through liquidity, and I just I had like a literally a ninety cent profit in in thirty seconds and I was just so giddy to get out. That's why most traders don't make it because most traders just want to take a profit instead of holding it and having a reason to get out. So ho hopefully that makes sense. And this is what this does for you. If you have a bar chart, how are you going to know where the area is to get out besides just using your, your manual three times or when it gets to DVA or VWAP? Let the market show you where to get out. It's, it, it's literally that simple. I, I can literally, I talked about this last time, I could put my eight-year-old daughter in front of this screen and say, CC, where do you, where do you think, what do you think is happening here? Well, the blue's winning, daddy. I, just, I think the blue is going to keep winning. I mean, it's that easy. I mean, look at this. <laughs> I, I, I hate to make it sound so simple, but it really is. And when you can think about trading in these simplified terms, it makes trading fun and it makes, it makes sense. And it just, it just helps your overall mental ability where you're not making stupid mistakes because you're second guessing yourself. There's nothing to second guess, right? I mean, unless I'm, I'm seeing something other people don't see, there's just nothing to second guess until you see the other side winning. Period. Yeah, I, no, I, 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 it, that's just fantastic to hear um, because <laughs> it, it's so hard and painful to see uh, uh, and stay with it um, if, um, uh, you, you know, you, you, um, it, it, it's reached your, your, your objective and, uh, uh, but, you know, to see it all go back down against you and, uh, and that can be painful. So, uh, mm -hmm. right. so that, that's, that's the point, Bruce, right? It's like, you literally feel like you're on a level playing field. You literally feel like, ha ha, you're, you're not getting me. You're not, because you got to remember these algorithms are designed to do that to you. That's what you have to remember when you're trading. These algorithms are designed to whipsaw the market back and forth to make you puke into their orders. That's what that's what they're there doing. So if you can know the areas and know what you need to see before you get out, 
you, you can fight, you can fight these algorithms all day long. And that's what's so refreshing about it. You know, I spent years and years getting my ass kicked by algorithms, not knowing like why and where and how. And then when you have this, you're like, let's play. I know exactly what you're doing. I know where you're putting your orders in. I know where you're pulling them. I know what's fake. I know what's real. So let's play. That's that's how that's and that's how you have to go into it. You have to go into it like you're going into a battle with somebody because you are. You're trading against the brightest minds on the planet. So you know you you've got to have you got to have something where you're you're confident in what you're looking at. Right. Uh, it's a, it's a, it's really good to hear. Um, and uh, let's see, uh, maybe a couple more questions, and then uh, I think we'll uh, we'll wrap it up here. Um, uh, some questions on: Do you trade options at all? Uh, I do not, not right now. I mean, I got enough going on where you know I do think options are a play, but I, again, I'm I'm very short term um, uh, as far as trading goes. You know, it's, it, I, I don't really hold things. I mean, I know you can trade options short term as well. Um, some of them are very liquid, and it's actually probably a really good idea. I just haven't gotten to that point yet. Again, you got to remember the stock, especially the stock trading. I've just picked up in the last year and a half. So, and then I've also just picked up using Bookmap to trade stocks. So, yeah, I mean, eventually, I think that's a great way to leverage your money even more if you know the areas and you can you have a liquid stock with liquid option prices or uh, strike prices. I think that's a great idea. I just haven't done it yet. Okay. Okay. Great. Um, <laughs> Another question here, um, a good question. Um, so if you miss your original buy area, um, then then how, how do you react? Do you, are, are you looking for a pullback uh, or, are you, or are you looking for uh, maybe buying even at a higher level? Yeah, I mean, it, of course, you're, I mean, this is all basic trading mistakes, things that happen. I mean, it, it's going to happen. You're, you're going to be waiting. You're, you're going to be waiting for in, in, in actually, you know, we're, while we're on the topic, E-mini has a, a propensity to do this all the time where it comes near liquidity and it won't get to it. And then all of a sudden it just rips away. Like this is a good example, right? So if you're sitting here waiting saying, all right, I want to get short, but I'm going to wait till it gets up here and see what it does. It won't even get near there. And then it just sells off the rest of the day. So, you know, if if I you know if I'm waiting here and I see this, then you know then I'm gonna I'm gonna try to find an area where heavy selling came in and wait for it to come back there. I mean I won't just blindly chase. A lot of times you'll see it go through. I'll say okay well I, I won't get short again until it breaks through a liquidity level or I see this pull and then I'll get in. Yeah it's gonna be painful. You're gonna cost yourself some points. You never just want to. This is the whole reason you're using this program. You don't want to just blindly throw an order in. Use what you're seeing. Use these areas. You know, so if I if I miss this cell right here, I say to myself, okay, so if it sells below this area, completely below this area, I'll get in here and maybe risk, I'll just stop myself out of some of these here if it comes back above this area where this buying came in. So I didn't get the best price, but I'm not risking a ton either. It's not like I'm risking it up to 20 here. I'm saying, okay, this should go. I tried it once. It came up. The selling dried up. The buying dried up, I should say. Now the sellers are coming back in. I will sell it here now that I'm getting confirmation it's at a worse price. I could have sold it at 18, but I'm selling it at 16. You don't have to risk it back up to 20, risk it back up. If it gets back above where this buying was weak right here, then, you, then you're probably wrong. Then you take your loss, wait for your next opportunity. That's the thing, you know, traders have to realize you are gonna be wrong probably, you know, 50, 60% of the time. But if you can make three, four, five, 10 times your money when you're right, it doesn't matter. You can be wrong 70% of the time and you can still be a millionaire, right? So eventually, so that's the whole point. You, you know, you got you to have your risk in place. You got to know, and you just don't, you got to know where you're getting out if you're wrong. This shows you, and you got to know that you're just not blindly thrown. Like right here, this thing started falling off. You don't want to just sell right here. Why would you sell right here? Like if you miss it, you miss it, but you're selling here. Now there's really nothing here. I mean, you got to risk back all the way back up to here. So you want, you want to risk six and a half points or five and a half points? No, just accept it. You'll get another chance. Almost all, unless it's some news driven event, especially in the mini S and P that has just overrun with algos, whipsaw algos, you're going to get another chance. So you just got to be patient and this helps you be patient. That's the whole point. You don't have to chase because you know the areas. Hopefully that makes sense. Yeah, no, it makes really, really good sense. Um, uh, it, it's it's really great to hear. I mean, you're 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 bringing in all your your past uh, uh, trading experiences as well, uh, and uh, is seeing it here visualized within the book map chart and and applying it uh, along with now that higher time frame frame perspective as well. Uh, so uh, it seems like a, a it's been a real effective combo here for you. 
Yeah, absolutely. And then, you know, again, I have to go here soon, but um, if people want to, uh, you know, my email's on there, you can reach me at Twitter. The Twitter's more of a private Twitter account. I, I do a lot of horse racing stuff, you know, being the trader gambler I am. Um, so you may see some funny tweets and stuff that I don't have a lot of stocks, future stuff on there because during the day I'm not playing with Twitter, I'm watching the market. So, but if you want to reach me, you can reach me at scottpolsini at gmail.com. Um, you know, I do mentoring. We're about to, you're going to start that book, book uh, map marketplace where I, you know, put some setups in there. People can purchase and kind of learn the setups one by one, things like that. But if you want to get a hold of me for mentoring or anything else, uh, you can reach me at uh, either Twitter or scottpolsini at gmail.com. Okay, great. I, I put it into the uh, chat here for everybody, uh, as well as uh, uh, Scott's uh, special offer link for Bookmap. So these are only special offers with our educator partners. Uh, these are not available from the bookmap.com website. So uh, I'm putting it back in, uh, and you can read about the special offers in this as well. I, I've included this, the descriptions. So you have his email, you have his Twitter, and you have the special offer as well if you're interested in Bookmap. Um, I, I think that's it. Uh, Scott, I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Uh, it's, uh, it's always great to, uh, to get your insights here. Sure, thanks for having me. I hope to do this again. I hope people learn something. I know it was pretty quick and I was kind of rambling, but I mean, I, and I, and I'm dead serious, Bruce. We were talking about this before you know we got on. I mean, Bookmap is the best thing I have ever seen. You know, if, if I would have had this back in my scalping days, I would have never went from riches to rags, trust me. <laughs> I would have been a much more informed and it, this is the best indicator software I have ever seen in 20 years. Oh, thanks, Scott. I really appreciate it. I mean, it, it's funny. Like, uh, I, I've heard that from other traders as well. Like, like where if I had this, it would have been illegal. Uh, you know, right. like uh, 20 years ago. Right. Um, so, uh, so anyway, uh, uh, no, uh, deeply appreciated, Scott, and uh, uh, thank you for your efforts uh, and uh, and sharing with us. Sure. Thanks for having me. Okay. All right, everybody. Thank you. Uh, have a good night, and uh, we'll catch up another time.